All right, guys, here is the deal. Today's video, AMD Radeon RX 9070. We're gonna be taking a look at this card and also at uh, this card, which uh, looks exactly the same, but I promise you they're a little bit different. Radeon RX 9070 XT costs a little more, performs a little better. Let's see how they stack up. It seems that new GPUs tend to come in bunches. We haven't really had any in a few years, and now all of a sudden, within the span of a couple of months, we have NVIDIA's 50 series, as well as AMD's new RDNA 4 graphics cards, the 9070 and the 9070 XT. To get this out of the way up front, no, the 9070s do not compete at the high end of the market, but that's absolutely okay, as long as they're priced appropriately. The Radeon RX 9070 will be $549 at launch, and the more powerful 9070 XTX will see a $50 price premium at $599. This puts them significantly below even Nvidia's lowest tier GPU from this generation, the 5070 Ti, which MSRPs for $750, but sees a realistic street price of about $900 or more in most cases. So the question is, what do you get for your money? Well, not to spoil anything, but AMD appears well positioned here. Both the 9070 and 9070 XT come equipped with 16 gigs of GDDR6, which feels like a really solid number for the performance target that AMD is aiming for. By comparison, a complaint going back multiple generations now on Nvidia hardware is that they are skimping on VRAM and their mid-tier products. The 5070 Ti does have a comparable memory configuration, but again, it will cost you about 50% more if you can even find one. The prior generation 4070 Ti, which we will be comparing to today, only came with 12 gigs. Another thing that AMD has going for it is that they still are sticking to the tried and true 8-pin PCIe power connectors on their cards. While this isn't really a benefit, it's certainly not a detriment, as the 12VH power connectors have proven to be. Reports of uneven power draw, melted connectors, and even small fires have been around for years now when discussing NVIDIA products, and even though some of this is certainly user error, it's nice to not have to worry about it when considering your next gaming GPU. Connectivity on both the 9070 and 9070 XT consists of three DisplayPort 2.1a and one HDMI 2.1b ports, and they run on a PCIe Gen 5 interface. For this video, we'll be comparing these cards to the 4070 Ti, the closest NVIDIA competition, as well as the RTX 4090 to see what the deficit is to what is approximately the top of the range. Unfortunately, as I am just getting back into making these types of videos, I don't have any other GPUs on hand to compare to, but these numbers should give you an idea of where the 9070s stand. All of my testing was conducted on an actual gaming system, which is, I know, pretty crazy, right? This build uses an Intel 13900K along with 64 gigs of DDR5 memory and a Fantex NV7 case. The tilted GPU mount that you see here was removed for this test and all cards were plugged directly into the PCIe slot with the side panels closed. All the results you'll see here are at native resolution without any upscaling or software fanciness like DLSS or FSR. First, let's take a look at power draw during a 4K gaming load. These measurements are the average wattage pulled by each card during Black Myth Wukong, where you can see the AMD cards actually being slightly less efficient than the 4070 Ti. Still, the draw of the 9070 XT is still below 300 watts on average, which is about where the 7900 series lived. Next, let's compare some synthetic benchmark scores in 3D Mark Port Royal and 3D Mark Steel Nomad. The Port Royal scores were especially impressive, showing significant improvements in ray trace graphics performance over the last generation of AMD cards. Steel Nomad scores also improved over last generation, despite MSRP being lower by a good margin. Now, our gaming tests are going to be divided up as follows. I've tested these new GPUs in 1440p and 4K with both ray tracing on and off. So these slides will be grouped by game, and we'll go through the different results for each game before moving on to the next. We'll also look at performance summaries at the end. Cyberpunk 2077 was up first, and the results at 1440p ultra settings with no ray tracing show the 9070 trailing the 4070 Ti by 6 FPS, while the XT edges it out by 4 FPS. When we leave the resolution at 1440p but turn on the medium ray tracing preset, we see a slightly surprising result, with the 9070 now beating out the 4070 Ti and the 9070 XT pulling ahead by even more. 
This definitely speaks to the third generation RT cores being much more capable than their predecessors. Let's move to a higher resolution and take a look at what these cards can do in 4K. Perhaps due to their larger frame buffer versus the 4070 Ti, the new 9070s outperform it handily, with the 9070 scoring 12 frame per second victory and the 9070 XT jumping ahead by 16 FPS. Again, clicking the preset over to medium ray tracing, we certainly expect the scores to come down by a good bit, which they do, but the 9070 and the 9070 XT still come out on top of the 4070 Ti. Next up is F124, which is clearly not as punishing on GPUs as Cyberpunk. It runs at high frame rates, especially at 1440p, but this is necessary for a fast-paced racing title. However, turning on all the eye candy like we see shortly can tang performance. The rasterized 1440p gaming numbers are impressive all around, but once we change RT to high, we quickly stop seeing gaudy 200 FPS numbers, but still have a highly playable experience with all cards on this chart. The new AMD cards struggle a little bit versus the non-RT results and the 9070 falls behind the 4070 Ti, but we actually see performance improve if we up the resolution to 4K and turn off ray tracing. This still leaves the game looking gorgeous and the results from the AMD cards are relatively strong. The 9070 XT creeping up towards the 4090 is especially impressive. If we leave the resolution alone and again toggle on all the ray tracing features on the high preset, we can see what this title can really do even on high-end hardware. Again though, we see both new AMD 9070 cards beating out the 4070 Ti, which is something I wouldn't have expected. Next up is the slayer of all graphics cards worldwide, Black Myth Wukong. Even without RT effects enabled and at the lower resolution, the cinematic graphics preset is just a crusher. Yes, the 4090 does manage to crack 60 FPS, but none of the other cards are even close. The 9070 does tie the 4070 Ti, and the 9070 XT manages to beat it. However, even on the medium ray tracing preset, the AMD cards just fall off a cliff in this game. This is, I guess, entirely not unexpected, as no GPU can really keep pace with what the game engine is trying to do, but this does unfortunately lead to an unplayable experience. AMD does make a bit of a comeback if we mercifully turn off RT and head back to 4K gaming. Although the 4070 Ti manages to split the two AMD cards and I still wouldn't recommend playing at these frame rates, the 9070 and the 9070 XT show that when it comes to raster performance, AMD still does show very well comparatively. And then we have this slide, which I'm not even sure we need to discuss. I don't think anybody with any hardware right now should be playing this game at these settings. And this isn't even as bad as it could be as I only use the RT medium preset. Let's just move on. Our last game is thankfully going to give our GPUs a bit of a reprieve as Dirt 5 can run on a potato and still looks pretty good. At 1440p and ultra settings, our non-ray tracing performance is very strong. The 9070 functionally ties the 4070 Ti while the 9070 XT spits out 189 FPS on average. Turning ray tracing on doesn't prove to be too much of an additional challenge here as frame rates come down only slightly. This does mean though that the 9070 falls slightly behind the 4070 Ti while the 9070 XT dips 19 FPS due to the improved visuals. At 4K, the 9070 cards again show that they have enough chops to game with the best of the mid-range offerings as the 9070 hits 109 frames per second while the 9070 XT sits at 124, both beating the 4070 Ti. And then at 4K with RT on, the 9070 XT maintains a 110 FPS average while the 9070 just barely fails to crack 100. They both beat out the 4070 Ti in this test. Now given this data, I put together a few summary charts showing how the 9070 and 9070 XT perform relative to the 4070 Ti as a baseline. On average at 1440p and with no RT features turned on, the 9070 is 3% faster than the 4070 Ti while the 9070 XT is 12% faster. If we keep the resolution the same but turn on ray tracing, we see the 9070 fall behind by 7%. However, the 9070 XT maintains a lead of 8% over the 4070 Ti. At 4K and with no extra eye candy, the 9070 performs on average 6% faster than the 4070 Ti, and the 9070 XT pulls even further ahead with an 18% lead. And then at 4K with RT features clicked on, the 9070 XT surprised me by actually extending its lead to 20% over the 4070 Ti, while the 9070 was dead even. Again, I think we can attribute this to the larger memory allocation on the AMD cards, as well as the improvements to the new generation of RT accelerators. So overall, what do we see? Again, using the 4070 Ti as a baseline, the 9070 is dead even with it. This is again for a product that will likely cost you less than the competition and hopefully be available to purchase. 
The 9070XT maintains a healthy margin of 12% ahead of the 4070 Ti, again, at what is likely to be a lower cost. All right, guys, so what is our actual conclusion here? Well, as with everything in 2025, it really just comes down to pricing and availability. NVIDIA's really shot themselves in the foot this generation with the 5090, 5080, and 5070 Ti on both fronts. And AMD, from all indications, states that these should be available for purchase on launch day and also moving forward. They said they have been shipping them out to retailers for several weeks now, so there should be good stock. Uh, but as of the filming of this video, honestly, I, I just don't know. Obviously, we get these cards ahead of time. We film these videos ahead of time, and I don't know what the launch landscape is actually going to look like. With that being said, if we take AMD at their word regarding how many of these are actually gonna be available, then I think this could actually be a pretty successful launch, uh, especially considering what NVIDIA has been putting out there, and especially considering AMD's prior generation of card. Now, the 7900 XT and the 7900 XTX both were actually pretty decent products. However, they launched at a price that was deemed to be too high. Pricing did come down over time. However, they're still gonna be more expensive than either of these 9070s, and the 9070 base performs about what the 7900 XT does, and the 7900 XTX performs only slightly better than the new 9070 XT. That puts these RDNA 4 cards in a really nice spot. They could draw a lot of the mid-range market away from NVIDIA, which is really kind of floundering right now and does not have very good public sentiment. AMD's performance in this segment is actually very strong, and their pricing seems pretty well positioned. So what do you guys think of the 9070 and the 9070 XT? Make sure to sound off down below in the comments. It was great to get back to doing these kinds of product reviews for you guys. Stay tuned to the channel for more videos coming soon, and thank you so much for watching.